Roll up, roll up, ladies and gentlemen, to the greatest podcast on earth. Step right up and experience the magnificence that is the Two Ring Circus Podcast. You'll gasp, <gasps> you'll laugh, <laughs> and you'll be amazed at what comes next. Amazing. Don't worry about the smell. It's just the stars of our show, Tom Italiano. Yo. And Matt Bradshaw. <laughs> you idiot. Welcome. <laughs> My boob popped my shirt <laughs> and the microphone came off. All <laughs> right, Dolly Parton. <laughs> oh my How's that God. working out for you? Oh, I'm working nine to five, my friend. <laughs> Happy uh, 137. Whoa. Wow. 137 of these. Years. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it feels like. Hey. <laughs> what? Don't be a dickhead. Dog ears. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still a lot. Yeah. What's 137 dog years? It's like 20. (laughs) (laughs) What is it? um, What are 20 years? uh, Year sevens? Yeah. That's pretty good. Thanks. Hey. Yeah. What do you mean, thanks? I'm the one that said it. What? I said it. I said. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to rewind that. How many years? What? I said 20 (laughs) something. I said it. Okay. What did you say? I said it. No, I... I said you, 20. No, I said it before you. All oh, right, then. You clown shoes. I mean, I've been wrong before. In I'm the last walk- minute. <laughs> <laughs> I walked past a, uh, a, a, a... Like a little... It was a shop. Right. Like a cafe kind of shop. Cafe. Like a... <clears throat> so there was an alfresco dining area, and it was just like a window out onto the footpath kind of vibe. Yeah. Coffee shop kind of thing. Uh-huh. Yeah. Called Bold. So it must have been a restaurant as well. Uh, as in B O W L. No, yes. Apostrophe D. Uh, so one, fuck so off. Bowed. Also. Yeah. Well, no, bold. Right. Because there's no E. It wasn't bowel. It was. Anyway. But there was a little. It was printed on the, on the edge of the bar top. No money, no sugar. Hmm. Huh. So you can't just come and get some sugar unless you buy something. Is that what it means? I don't know, maybe. Now, this is the thing. I shouldn't have to fucking work so hard if I'm just walking down the street to find out what someone means. We speak English. We write words in English to communicate information to people. Yeah. Why make it so difficult to understand? Yeah, I, I th- think they meant no money, no honey. Don't come right. here asking for credit. I think I think they meant. Oh, I didn't say no. Yeah. I said no money, no sugar. It wasn't it? It was no cash, no sugar. Right. I, in a world of tap and go. I don't understand what it meant. I don't either. I'm never going there. Mm. There's a lot of um, it's a lot of that rubbish going on in the world. But no. is it just because, like, yeah, go on. We're in our thirties. <sighs> I honestly, I I that read was a, that was a joke for read, people who really know us. I read no cash, no sugar today, and thought, do I not understand this because I'm now officially too old to understand yeah, how it, children speak? Is it, you know, a Kanye West album? Geordie and I were on the aeroplane flying back from Denpasar and we remembered that Nell, the bass player, had a Nintendo Switch with him. So we wanted to play it. I couldn't even turn it on. Uh, <laughs> is it because it doesn't actually have a Switch? <laughs> yeah, it was a Nintendo No Switch. Yeah, like, you know. It was a non-Tendo Switch. Just telepathize and turn it on with yeah, your brain. Ridiculous. Yeah, ridiculous. We sat there with our... Two little fucking detachable controllers just looking at the screen as it went through this endless loop of start, two player, yeah, start, two <laughs> player, start, two. Now, now, fix this. Make it work for us. What, what can't you do? Just f- makes it work. Make it work. We can't play Mario Kart. Make it work. 
Father, he hands it back to us. <laughs> I didn't know how to make it go forward. Only one of us was driving. Is it two-player? Yes, it's two-player. Oh. <laughs> so we mostly sat there laughing at ourselves for being so fucking old. Well, here's, here's old for you. Cat and I played Jenga last night, but real Jenga, like actual with blocks, not on a computer game. But Jenga's not a computer game. I know, but that's my point. Oh. We played a game. Now, it's harder to play Jenga on an airplane. <laughs> be fun, though. They're really fun. Also, do da do da. Hard to play Jenga. Huh? Jenga on an airplane. Ah. Uh, can't play Jenga on a plane. Do da do da. Day. Mm. Mm. I like Jenga. Yeah. I played giant Jenga at 24th, 51st, pup, 20. Mm. Hut, hut, hut. <laughs> there's, a, there's a bar in St Kilda called 25th Apartment. 24th Apartment. Uh, amendment. No, definitely Apartment. Ah. Uh, 20... No, no, I'm making an amendment. 20... <laughs> 25th. Yeah. Anyway, they have giant Jenga. It's fun. And you're drunk and it falls on your head. Who's the Aussie comedian that um, says the C word a lot? Uh, or like all of them. I know. Sorry. That's <laughs> ridiculous. No, not Jamoan. He's lovely. Yeah, but is he Aussie? He's li- he surely. He's nah. lived here a long time. He's still got time. an accent. No, he's definitely yeah. got an accent. Um, he said fuck the other day in, in one that I saw. Oh. Which I was surprised. I thought he was. I thought he always worked clean. I've never seen him live live. No, I haven't either. Maybe he's not real. I really like. <laughs> I really like him. He's very good. Just yeah, yeah. perfect, perfect delivery, beautiful. Good timing. Great face. Good. Who's the Tiny. comedian that says the C word a lot? Well, I can't remember, but he's very funny. He's the, the guy that does, does is the, he gun... the gun control. Yeah, 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 that guy. What's his name? Miles Franklin. No. Um, Benjamin. No. Benjamin Button. Franklin. Chris, no. I meant Chris Franklin. The Chris Franklin, not who it is. No. Um, him. Bill, Bill, Bill no. Burr. No. But he idiot. does his, he does his, in his bit, he's like, he, and it's about the gun control thing where he's like, I know you Americans love your guns and, you know, you've got it written in the Constitution, and but you're like, you can't change the Second Amendment. You can't change the Second Amendment. And then he goes, no, just to let you know, <laughs> it's an amendment. <laughs> That's the whole point. Oh, what kind of name is that? Yeah, yeah. Huh. Funny guy. Funny guy. Bright, very bright guy. Yeah, Interesting. Yeah. Uh, mm, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, yes. I had a quiet yes. taste. Or, or yeah. just you got to be in that kind of... Yes. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Uh Uh-huh. I just consulted my list. Mm Oh. I never had a lisp. I mean, I had a lot of other speech and put, put, put. Because I'm a dedicated iPhone, uh, Apple user. Um, But I didn't realise. Oh, okay. Wow, that was hard. Okay. Uh, One, dedicated Apple user. Two, I've had an issue for some years now where my stuff... At home, even though I'm, le- <laughs> even, though I'm shut up, even though I'm uh, absolutely connected to my Apple account with my email address, with my correct password, on my computer, on my device, on my other stuff, all, all my all my stuff. But I use Notes a lot. My Notes sync between my phone and my iPad, but they won't sync to my computer. So for years, I've been using um, Gmail to sync my notes, which I hate doing because, you know, corporate uh, overlords and, and Google and bad, and I don't... And, and I'm forced to, but I don't like it. And later we're going to talk about aeroplanes. Mm. So. <laughs> loving this. This is the best podcast we've done. Shut your we should stop now. <laughs> uh, but I recently discovered um, that when you use notes on your... Uh, I device um, and use the cloud it it gives you you can put little you can put a little circle as your as your tick your bullet yeah. and, and then just tap it when you're done with that and it puts a little tick in it brilliant which you can't do in when it's synced with Gmail are you using the most up to date yes systems and all your stuff yes the most up to date systems of everything ah. anyway this is now my list. This is a a, a a note in my in my phone, and on my iPad, but not on my computer. Um, called TRC dash. What I'm gonna say. 
Oh, good. And this I, is mine. You want to see mine? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now you guys won't believe this, but I also have. I've started making notes in here, by the way, for the for our next live show. Yeah, we need to do one of those. Yeah. Here's mine. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm screen. all about the improv. Oh, are you just? Yeah. Well, luckily, one of us comes prepared. Well, I don't come prepared, but you know, I've got some things that Shh, I like to get across. Sorry. Yeah. No, but I. I've just got lyric ideas and measurements for things I have to build at home. So, so what do you think is 9,400 millimetres by 18,000 millimetres? What do you think that is? Nothing's 18,000 millimetres. Yeah, our backyard is. That's how much grass I need. 18,000 millimetres. You don't measure grass in millimetres unless it's the height of it, not the length of it. Well, I do, all right. I suppose that is the length Well, I was well. trying to make it... Because you talk about how long your grass is. But you should be yeah. talking about how high your grass is. My grass is really high. Oh, no, I the think I say The corn is as high as an elephant's eye. Long. What? I think I say long. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone says long. Yeah. My lawn's too long. No one's ever used that phrase. That feels weird. Why does that feel weird? Well, listen. My grass is too long. The grass is too long. The grass is long. <laughs> it needs mowing. The grass is long. You yeah, don't say heavy. He's my brother. That's all I'm feeling right now. You don't, you don't right say the grass is high. But really, when it's long... 18,000 millimetres, incorrect. 8,000 mil. yeah, incorrect, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 18,000 millimetres is dumb. Don't say I'm that not. again. Well, I, would, I wouldn't say that. You did. Um, but I wouldn't. But you, <laughs> you did. No, hang on. You, point, you won't again? No, no, my point is like, I wrote, I've written that as a measurement. It's not something I would say. But don't write as a measurement either. But I need to know that. If you're going to the lawn department at Bunnings. It's, is, uh, it's it, called the laundry. <laughs> You're going to the laundry, you don't say, I need 18,000 millimetres of grass. You say, I need 18 metres, <laughs> you oh, fucking clown. Really high. <laughs> <laughs> like your grass is going to be high. Oh, God. I oh, know, what a world. 18,000 millimetres, one square centimetre, please. <laughs> <laughs> is that, that be referred to as a patch? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh-huh. the Oscars. Uh-huh. Do you care? Um, I, I like to see who wins. Okay. But I don't give a fuck about what they say in their speeches, those weirdos. Okay. Oh, okay. God. Yeah, right, really? This is really... Yeah, and I feel the same way about musicians as well. I don't care what you think about the world. Just play some fucking music. Just do some acting. Just or have a podcast. <laughs> have a podcast where people can go... Right, and listen to what you think about the world. But don't do it on a broadcast. Who gives a shit? Well, right, do it in your art. <laughs> I think is the interesting about it is that because they're excellent at what they do and they are therefore well known for it, um, that for some reason they hold more clout. Oh, yeah, sure. Right? And every time I watch one of those things, the majority of the things that they say, whether it's scripted or it's a thank you speech or it's the presenters reading something off a cue card, whatever, you just go, ah, oh, you are excellent at acting or performing in whatever it is mm-hmm. that you do, but you, you're an everyday idiot like the rest of us. Fuck yes. And, and in fact, to be perfectly honest, I think actors are probably... I'm, I'm casting a wide net. It's okay. Don't worry about it. I don't. If there's any actors watching, maybe you're as bright as a Benjamin Button. But I suspect, actually, you're probably dumber than the rest of us. Because <laughs> well, you didn't real really world. take... Yeah, and yeah. you didn't take much notice at school. And someone else is writing your words for you. And you might be great at pulling the right faces and saying the right words at the right time. But you, I've seen these fucking people in interviews and stuff. And... I'm sure we've spoken about it on here before, or at the very least, I've spoken to you IRL about it um, in real life. life. <laughs> that was um, acting. Uh, where I feel like writers and directors must fucking cringe when some of these actors get up in interviews and start talking about the motivation for their character. And they clearly, because I've seen the film, have no fucking idea what they're talking about. Yeah, I think Stop it. it. Just read someone else's words and don't say anything else. Write a fucking script. I think that's what you're saying. Have about. a script written for you. <laughs> or don't speak. Yeah, I, I mean, 
I am interested in... Hmm. Uh, just... Have you seen Parasite? I have not. Um, Me either. But as you know, a fan of foreign films, and particularly of Asian foreign films, yeah. so I'm really looking forward to seeing it. Yeah, I just think too, here's, here's what a continuous... It's a continuous theme in the arts world of, you know, whether it's music or film or um, art and funding in particular about... Um, like I want to know, I want love is. I want to know who wins stuff. I want to know who's nominated. Mm-hmm. I want to and nominated. I'm assuming based on the amount of votes things get. I think that's how it works. Yes, right. but by the academy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is what this. I mean, this is part of the reason I asked. Do you care? Um, but I just like and then all what of what a the, bunch of aged white men well, think okay. is good. Well, but he, but that's my point. Like mm-hmm. I don't. Like the, all of the talk about, you know, s- snubbing and, you know, representation, all mm-hmm. that kind of st- fuck. Just, you know what? It's entertainment. Like sometimes the the best entertainment of the year, right, is made by a bunch of people who happen to be different to the people that some people want to be nominated. It's just how it is. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's not. Mm. Sometimes the best film of the year is a foreign film. Mm. Like, and that's, Great, mm. but it's not a big deal that it's because it's foreign that it won. It's a big deal because it's the best film of the year, and a whole bunch of people thought it was. Mm. That's the big deal. Mm. But I hear people talking about, you know, oh, it's the big deal because it's the first foreign language film, or you know, it shows this oh, represent- right. representation of this and represent. <clears throat> Fuck off! Oh no, I, you know, I haven't because I do not care. I literally the only thing, the only award I know, is that. That got best film, and that's the only thing I've heard about the whole thing. Oh, that's that's a, that's not quite true because I heard that Joaquin Phoenix has used it as a platform to. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's okay. What, what do you think is okay? I think it's okay that he used it as a platform. It, it, it 180 degrees diametrically opposed to you. No, I think it's okay. Oh. But I don't give a fuck, and I I just you know it's like I'm actually interested in the film and the movie and the acting. Yeah. Right. I'm not interested in Joaquin Phoenix's opinion about the rest of the world mm. when okay. he's when he is accepting an award for his acting. Okay. Like it's like that's not the place for you to pontificate. No. And that's no, I actually think that's um, that shows to me how someone in that position is completely out of touch with what they're sure. getting an award for. Yep. Like they're not getting an award, right, for their opinion about or their humanitarian or, exploits. Yeah, that's anything. not what that's for. Yeah. And and it, all, it makes me go, yep. It doesn't make me dismiss the work that he's done in the film. It would be weird if they got up on stage, though, and said, well, this is nice. Someone else wrote all my words, and a director said, go and stand there and say them. Yeah, but I thought, well, that's not how those things work, though. I mean, like, although, <laughs> if that's exactly what happened. Acting. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think it's like, actually, you know, to make a, you know, to make a movie takes a lot of people and... You know, we. You know, I'm really grateful to be part of it. Like, that's what you want to hear. Mm. You want to hear the. That's for me. That's the humanity of a person who gets recognised for the work they've done. Not. It just seems silly, mm. and that makes me. With all of the awards type things, it makes me. Because I know someone's going to talk about. You know, there was no women nominated as a director, and maybe when there's only five directors nominated, and you know. That just means that that year. They didn't make the best five films. Yep. That might be what it means. Well, sure. Mm. But it might mean something else. It might. But where? But I don't understand why... What I don't understand is why that they need to use that as a platform to talk about it there in those moments. Sure. Like, sure. that to me seems... I don't know... It, Seen, Who was the actress that, t- that turned up in the dress with all the female directors' names on it? Oh, I did hear that. Natalie Portman. Thank who's you. Who's constantly, you know, pushing that that yeah. ed- that agenda. It's like, okay, well, that's... Was she Princess Amidala? Was that her name? Yeah. I was going to say Amygdala, but no, there was no brain power in that performance. So, uh, um, Yes, she was. Yes. Speaking amongst, of acting, amongst other excellent performances in other films, but not for that particular style. Should we do thing. some? Oh, do you want to do some acting? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What's my motivation? <laughs> um, Your motivation is to make this funny. 
<laughs> well, you've written the script, you see. Or oh, is it a transcription? It's a transcription. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely a transcription. Now, look, uh, uh, let me preface this by saying I am aware that I get myself into these situations. Are you a, a, like a, um, a honeypot oh. to the bee of these situations? Thank you, darling, yes. <laughs> um, no, no, but like I remember uh, once um, telling a guy off for littering in a car park by just going up and because I saw him do it and tapping on his window. What are you doing? Yeah, that whole thing. And I remember a buddy of mine saying, you fucking need to be careful doing stuff like that because you don't know how someone's going to react. Um, and he was absolutely right. Yeah. And there is certainly the potential for one day for me to get my head fucking caved in by... A um, person. Yeah, by, by a person. No, by my... Um, oh, fuck. I mean, I got my nose broken for, for stepping in into a situation that was... What? When? Oh, years ago, years ago. Oh. At, at the Odeon, at Crown. Nah. Yeah, what? Well, I didn't know I this. told you the story. It's live, by the way. Um, um, and, then oh, the, okay. and then the possum. <laughs> and then the possum. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. And, that, uh, and I, you know, I was doing what I thought was the right thing. It wasn't a situation that I necessarily needed to buy into. But, you know, sometimes you just, or well, sometimes I just shoot my mouth off. And one day someone's really going to hurt me. And today could have been one of those days. So, I'll read the narrative. Yep. You read the I'm, bold and italic part. I'm, oh, I don't as, have any bold and italics. Ah, f- I used to do. do. Yeah, I just yeah. got bad eyes. Okay. Okay. okay, great. Yeah. Um, and uh, and you you'll be the other you'll be the other protagonist, and, I'll, I, be, what, and I'll be me. What sort of uh, what do you think the age of my character is? Uh, I'd say he was. Um, 30? 30? Uh, 20, 28, 30? Yeah. Yep. Size? Uh, bigger than me. Okay. Um, and do I have any... Um, would I... Is there anything about the way I speak that it would be could be highlighted? There is. Yeah. Yes. I'm going to say he was from... Are you I'm, typecasting me? I am. You're right. typecasting me? Yeah, he wasn't. I reckon he was Lebanese. All right. Okay, cool. Yeah. I got way too much facial hair currently to play this role. No, he had facial hair. All oh, right. right. Do Lebanese people not have facial hair? No, I just, they usually, the women. well, they're very, um, very sh- uh, clean, yes. sh- in a sense of the lines are usually very yes, defined that. and clean. He was so, that. Like, I haven't had a haircut for three weeks, so I'm, you know. Okay. No, just but, letting your viewers okay. at home know that... Um, I'm just so on the spot here. This wouldn't be in my actual. I was driving audition. to, I was driving to our gig tonight, Tuesday yeah. night at Crown, um, and driving down to Pan Highway. Gee whiz, what's happening over there? I don't know, but I don't like it. Do you want me to go and talk to him? Yeah, well, I'm tempted to. <laughs> Do you know uh, that noise? You, know, you, know, you can like... make less noise. You know. <laughs> well, I tell you to shush up, it's up. Well, that's fair enough, though. <laughs> I've usually said something worth telling the true shop over. <laughs> so, Nepean Highway, 80 yes. kilometres an hour. Uh, I see a late 80s BMW convertible, roof up. 1980s. Uh, what, hey? Late 80s? Yeah, 1980s. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll never get through this. <laughs> just, I'm um, just setting the scene. I just okay. want to make sure I know where I am. All right, yeah. all right. Yes, okay. It wasn't a, it wasn't a BMW fucking covered wagon. It was <laughs> Second? A, Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, windows both down, and clearly the guy was looking down at a phone in his lap. He wasn't doing anything else in his lap. He was clearly, yeah, reading a phone, but travelling at 80 kilometres now. Oh, that's bad. Not looking, okay. So I, and he looks over at me, okay, put your phone down. <clears throat> we pull up to the next set of traffic lights. He pulls up next to me, tells me to wind down my window. All right, so uh, this has been now. Life. Wind down your window. What was that? Mate, you can't be texting while you're driving. What's it to you? Because I and everyone around you are all road users. It's dangerous and it's illegal. So as the lights go green, you move off. I'm and a, he says, I'm a better driver than you even on my phone. <laughs> And I giggle to myself, and I wind my window back up. And then we get to the next set of traffic lights, and he, I look over, he's telling me to wind my window down. 
I want to go window down. And he says, did you hear what I say? I said I'm a better driver than you, even on my phone. <laughs> I said, what evidence leads you to that assertion? Well, do I look Indian or Asian to you? They can't drive for shit. <laughs> wow, so you're racist too. Good work. Who's fucking racist? They can't drive for shit. Okay, you think saying Africans and Indians can't drive isn't racist? Don't you fucking listen. I said Asians and Indians. <laughs> Lights go green. We drive off. Next set of lights, same thing. Tells me to wind down the window. I wind down the window. And he says... No one fucking blows me off like that. (laughs) Pardon? I said no one blows me off like that. Just fucking winding your window up while I'm fucking talking. Faggot. (laughs) Excellent. So you're homophobic as well. (laughs) Good work. And then, as we both take off, I hear... Don't tell me what to do. Fucking spastic. (laughs) That's funny. Real life, dude. not... Because, I mean, like, if it was a if it was a sketch like that with real actors like me yeah. and you and a narrator. And I, I, <sighs> I know. I said I know I get myself into these things. I don't go searching for this stuff. And, yeah. you know, I, you know, that's, I mean, that's not a, like, some of the things I fucking rail at people about or haul them up about in the street, you know, littering and shit like that. That's, you know, it's, to me, that's fucking social injustice stuff. Uh, uh, actually driving at 80 kilometres an hour looking down in your fucking lap and your phone is absolutely a social injustice that yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the whole to, you know someone who's littered type thing I have experience with an ex-partner who would do what you do and <laughs> it's terrifying because oh uh, yeah it can because be. adults even like I mean she's a woman and it would like there was about to be a fight. Yeah, yeah, fuck yeah. Right, but the, the other thing is, like, I remember saying, you can talk to someone about that without being confrontational in that way. You know, you just, there is a way to approach it. Just say, look, you know, because because she would do it when it was like a whole bunch of people around, and so it was like throwing down the gauntlet type thing, and like, come on, who's going to, you know, yep. fucking, I'll go, yeah. Um, and I've spoken to people, I've I have, and it's been fine, and like, you know, like. Hey, uh, look, I know that, like, no one wants to be pulled up about stuff like this, but, you know, you don't have to drop stuff on the ground. You know, there's just a bin over there. But, you know, do what you need to do. But, and then people go, yeah, yeah, right, so, yeah, sorry. But the other version is, like, fuck off, bitch. What are you, you're like, it's, like, what are you going to do about it? It's like, well, I shouldn't have to do anything about it. Your approach um, is, your approach is good. Yeah. Mine is, what? What the fuck are you doing? Yeah. There's a bit over there, yeah. you fucking idiot. And, and I actually think people respond to that, not what you bring, not not what you're picking on them for. <laughs> yes. uh, but uh, it's still. Um, I probably don't say you fucking idiot. I'm not. But you do with the way you say it. Oh, you go, ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I, there's a lot of things I need to modify in my life. Oh. Well, it's... So do we, like all of us. We need to modify. Hey, speaking of things we need to modify, um, I think there should be a worldwide movement, education movement, so particularly the Western world, so that we understand the origin of the things we say. Do you know what rule of thumb means? No. So I had a songwriting session today with um, a guy, Clint, really fun day. But we were talking, we ended up just like, sort of playing around with this idea of like how... You know, life's really, really busy and um, we live in a world of incredible convenience but we're still all, we're all too busy and blah, blah, blah because we don't have to really worry about the things that are really important in life, which is why I think people um, gravitate towards anxiety and mm. being stressed because all of the basics are covered. Yep. But if you had to worry about all your basics, you wouldn't have time to worry about stuff that's not basic, that's frivolous, potentially frivolous. But... So we, I, we started Googling, um, just to get ideas, we started Googling different things. And one of the things I put in is like, um, things that used to be legal that aren't anymore. Because one of the idea of like, you know, we used to make stuff by hand and now you just buy stuff. And we used to actually spend time cooking and now people spend more time going to get takeaway than they do actually making their own meals. Like, you know, or Uber Eats. You know, know. you could actually make the thing that you're getting pretty quick. Anyway, um, 
And so this thing came up. It was like 11 things that used to be legal um, that aren't anymore. And somewhere down the line was um, domestic violence, right? And in there is like, because there used to be a, a law, which is the rule of thumb, which was you were, you were allowed to beat your wife or your husband, but you're allowed to beat your wife as long as the implement that you, you used was no larger than a thumb. And of course, that meant it varied depending on the size of the hand and the person wielding the implement. But the rule of thumb means like... Fuck me. Yeah, that's what the rule of thumb is. So as a rule of thumb. Wow. It was, yeah. Okay. Well done. How's that? Yeah. You're like, what? You learned me something. Far out. We like use these kind of... Oh, now I now I've kind of want to go down the rabbit hole of... So what do they all mean? Like all these things. Cause yeah. Cause um, cause all... We, I mean, I think a lot of us are probably across, you know, the, the nursery rhyme thing where those, where those things, like the origin yeah. of those, which are almost exclusive. Like ring around the rosies. Dark and, <laughs> yeah. 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 Wow. Okay. Yeah, that one. That's good. Yeah. I mean, it's awful, but it's good. So we put it in a song. Great. Uh, we, I think the lyric we was, you know, do you really know, do you, do you know about, do you really know about the rule of thumb and some things are like best forgotten or something like that was the good. idea. It's good. Yeah. That was good. Yeah. Mm. Awesome. Look at you. You co-writing. Look at me with my co-writing. Got another one next week. I, I got Rosie again next two days because we've still got two songs to write oh, for an hour. I think I'd like to just sit there and watch you do it to see how it's done. <laughs> it's different every time. It's quite different every time as far as the... Oh, it doesn't help me. I can't go there every time. That'd be dumb. It, yeah, as far as, like, you know, who comes up with what and then what I do, we tend to keep. I mean, the song we wrote, well, Rosie and I wrote last week, um, she came in and said, oh, do you know what song I was listening to before I really like? And I was like, what? And she said, the, um, is it The Weight? I thought that's what you are going to say. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because I made weight. Um, and we, I basically took the same rhythm and then switched some chords around or, like, didn't play the same chord progression. Mm. And I was like, so that's... That's the basic of a feel. And we're thinking about, was, oh, we've got a song that feels like that, song that feels like that, song that feels like that. Topically, these are different versions, so we, let's not write that song twice for this record. Um, and then you get that last song. So we, we went with that feel, but changed the chords a little bit, different key. And um, then she started talking about these, these kind of ideas that she thought were nice to write about. And I wrote the lyric, which was the complete opposite of what she was saying, um, which you just don't do by yourself. When you sit down with a guitar by yeah, yeah. yourself, you go with your own I- your course. own flow and your own idea. Um, so it's really, really, really it's fun, good, really enjoyable. Uh, remembering, of course, that the, the songwriting that he's doing with Rosie and the songwriting he did today with Clint, the, the, this isn't part of his song a week challenge that he's made for himself. Nah. Nah. Different. Really impressive, really inspiring. Not inspiring enough for me to do anything to quite <laughs> write myself. No, but but when, when I put down a challenge for you to write songs, you do it. Oh, yeah. Just don't do it enough. I just don't challenge you enough. Don't challenge me. Yeah. I can't. Well, I'm, you're too busy. I'm not in a position to be challenged. No. I'll challenge you when um, you finish Rebel. Thanks, man. When it's done. It's great. It's good. I've I'll, I'll just got to work out the right time between finishing Rebel and you saying yes to another project. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well... 22nd of February, Alia and Harmony and, and their friend oh, Chelsea yeah. are cutting their hair off. So we're doing a charity event for that. The week after that is the Masquerade Ball for Veronica. So th- these are the, th- these, that, uh, those two things in Rebel are the things that are kind of consuming my time at the moment. Um, plus, you know, gigs and trying to run a, an agency as well. You know, now that things are ramping up yep. in the new year with football coming back and everything. Yeah. So venues looking for acts and... <gasps> so trying to find new good acts, but you know, tr- yeah. So yeah, it's busy. It's a busy time. Do you find with the agency stuff? Do you find that um, how often does someone who is a performer kind of just say, you know, what, I'm tapping out for a while. I'm not going to play anymore. Almost never. No, yeah. never. No, um, as in not to me, but I've certainly come across plenty of them. Who yes, have, yeah, and someone who just sprang to mind recently who's getting back into it the first time in a long time not Paul no no Dan certainly Dan Tobias oh cool um, Dave Jones actually a little bit as oh well. good he's mainly been too busy too. yeah but yeah yeah so it's 
I think lots of musos. I think a lot of musos you and I know um, would like to tap out, but have convinced themselves they can't do anything else with their lives, and so continue to slug away. Really? It, even though they don't particularly like what they're doing. Oh, we should talk about that IRL because I'm not sure that I'm. I get that vibe. Really? But I, I, you and I have, I guess, by virtue of the fact you have an agency and you book people for stuff you'd have di- way different conversations than I would yeah maybe um, and I tend to only see people in set breaks at, when we're at the same kind of places but oh, hey yeah. how you going yeah good man yeah. Yeah. Um, well I mean Lee Harding didn't do it for a long time yeah that's right he came back into it yep he seems to be enjoying himself well that's good that's what you want well fuck isn't it though god bless us yeah you want to be enjoying yourselves yeah oh, I what could... about you with your songs about I can. I wish I didn't do this anymore. Whatever that one was called. Yeah, but that's the good thing about writing songs. When you write enough songs, you can you can have a character in a song that thinks something that isn't you. I've stopped. I really stopped writing um, about me. Have you? In like about all like this is how I'm feeling and this is what I'm going through. Um, I'm getting an idea and and. Go with it's it. Good, I don't because uh, we're all getting sick of it. Yeah, I know. Um, but there is obviously a lot of me in those things, and you know, it's hard. It's hard to write something that you don't empathise with. Hmm. Um, like I've had a job before that I, you know, that with that particular side, I had a job that I didn't want to go to, and a job that I was like, "Fuck, my car's broken down, so I have to catch the train, and it's raining." And you know, I've gone to gigs where I'm like, what am I doing here? I'm just going to shout at people all night. This is stupid. Um, and then, you know, the next day I gone to a really nice gig where I, I was like, oh, let's see. <laughs> should I, why should I do that one? That's dumb. Yeah, okay. So it doesn't take much of a... It doesn't take much of a leap to put that situation in, oh, what if I was there in another situation? It's the same thing, but just the activity is slightly different. Mm. Um, but I... I I think when you write more, you just get in the zone of, oh, that's not me in my life, but that might be me in a slightly different situation. Sure. Um, like when we took, you know, the thing we did today, like I, I met Clint a few times, only really a few times, and had a couple of chats and hang out in um, Tamworth. Uh, I messaged him and said, hey, do you want to get together and write a song? And it was a hang when you played some music and wrote some lyrics down. Um, and the good thing about that, it's like, because there's no... I'm not writing for with him because I need a song for my record or he mm-hmm. needs a song for his. Yeah. We're just getting together to make some music with people, someone that we've not done it with before. And so there's no pressure. Um, it's good, man. There's no... The, the ego is not concerned about whether or not, you know, anyone's... You know, that someone's going to talk positively or negatively about it. Um, it's just, you know... Mm. I, and I'm sure that I will ask people that there will be pressure because there's a project or there will be pressure because that other person feels a certain way about what if what if I don't show up on the day with a good idea mm. and, and so I don't contribute much and will that guy talk to other people in my industry about oh, yeah, I didn't right. fucking show up with anything good but I think if you think that way going into stuff it's you're probably going to manifest it more than you are going to avoid it yeah that makes sense well that's life yeah isn't it? You know? I think so. Yeah, prepare, I think I'll fail to prepare. prepare to fail. <coughs> oh well, there's that. Was it? Um, really was it? Um, Preparing to p- fail was the part I was yeah, focusing yeah. What, on. Yeah, yeah. Was it piss poor preparation? Well, no, poor preparation. Oh fuck! It's some. Is it what's some phrase? Mm, um, I don't know what you're talking about. Preparation prevents piss poor performance. Oh shit! That's I've never the, heard that's that. That's the P's thing. It's very good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, five P's. Something. Well, the. the the piece put together, yeah. The illiterate piece. <laughs> the, the illiterate piece. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, we should go. Well, I should go. Because you've got to go to Adelardio. Adelardio. Yeah. Yep. That's um, one of those early ones. Well, I'm going to go. Do you know what I'm going to do? What? I'm going to go and drop some chocolate Easter eggs into my niece's letterbox. Um it's not Easter yet, is it? No, nah, no, nah, but she wrote me a song. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. She sang a song where um, there was a three-year-old girl. This is, but I'm paraphrasing the lyrics. But a three-year-old girl, and she went to the shop, and 
Uh, she's also a kinder girl. And then Uncle Dom came. Uncle Dom, Uncle Dom, Uncle Dom, Uncle Dom. And then Uncle Dom got me a chocolate egg. It's <laughs> pretty cute. Fucking great. Yeah. Just that. It's a cute kid. How she's old is she? Three and a bit. God, is she? Nah, she's... Oh, three and a half. Yeah. Is she? Yeah. Far out. Yeah, she's very, very, very fun. Wow. Good for you, Uncle Dom. Yeah. I, yeah. I, look, I have nothing to do with them, but in a sense of... I don't, yeah, you'd hope so. Make it weird. <laughs> but uh, it's a good fun to hang out with. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Thank you, sister and brother and partners. Help you too. I invited some people to like our page today. We got, oh, we got another 10 likes today. Ooh, likes. Mm. That's all. I should go home too because I'm tired. Get out. <laughs> well, what's in here? My oh, stuff. This is Matt's stuff. What we got? Got things that make him smell okay. good. <laughs> got things that make him see proper. You got probably a whole bunch of cash from gigs. No, no just no some cash glasses. From gigs in oh, we got things that make his breath smell good. So what? very. No, that's it, my earplugs. This is your personal hydrating pouch. <laughs> excellent. Oh, we got birthday cards, Christmas cards. They are Christmas cards. You're right. Yeah, we're getting prepared. No. Oh. Preparation prevents piss poor performance. Say that five times faster. Good night. <laughs> Fly the biscuits. Thanks for joining. If you joined, if you didn't. Thank you. Hmm? Fair enough. I'll ask you that later. <laughs> Bye.